have been sharing the platform for quite a few years with several different persons. But I think this is the first time that I have had this wonderful opportunity and privilege to share the platform with this lady beside me. In her youthful years, we called her Fatty Brown. She also had a car which we called Kari. And while we were on campus, all we had to do was to put a little petrol in the ta um, tank, it was a little angle, yes, and drive all over the place. Many of us learned to drive on Sonia's car, right? But that's not really what I want to share. When I think of spirituality, I think of faith. And when I think of faith, I think that some of us are liberal with faith. Some of us are conservative with our faith. But Sonia Brown, I regard as an ultra-conservative believer in the truth that sets free. In her eyes, there is nothing but God. God is all that there is. And it is in this context that I invite her now to address you. <laughs> oh, thank you, my brother. Thank you, my friend. They are so kind. They are wonderful and beautiful. Thank you. Friends, good morning. It's, it's a real pleasure to be here this morning to share with you and to share with my beloved friend, Freddie. Um, I would love to share this morning some thoughts on freedom. And um, while we were reading the responsive reading, I, you know, it, it just kept coming to me that God is just awesome, God is just wonderful, because I mean, synchronicity is really something, because um, many of the thoughts that I plan to share with you this morning were already contained in the responsive reading. So here goes. Two Saturdays ago, we celebrated Emancipation Day. And this past Thursday, we celebrated Independence Day. The celebration of emancipation is meant to symbolize an appreciation and thanksgiving for the end of slavery, while the Independence Day celebrations were meant to celebrate and give thanks for the birth of our nation and the end of British rule. Both emancipation and independence signify some form of freedom. The whole idea of emancipation and independence had me thinking, what is true emancipation and true independence? One dictionary definition of emancipation is the act of freeing or state of being freed, liberation. Another is to free from restraint, control, or the power of another, especially to free from bondage. And definition of freedom, exemption from external control, interference, regulation. The power to determine action without restraint, personal liberty. The founder of our teaching Dr. Ernest Holmes, speaking on freedom at a U.S. Independence Day service on July 4, 1937, said, and here I quote, ever since the dawn of civilization, ever since the first human beings began to grasp the significant fact that they were individual beings in a universe that seemed to be more or less hostile to them, the entire search of the human mind, its whole endeavor, has been to get free from evil, from bondage, and the shackles of lack, want, 
fear, superstition, uncertainty, pain, disease, poverty, and fear of the hereafter. And because of this, human systems exist. Organized philosophies spring up, sciences develop, educational systems are conducted, collective security is sought after, and religions are formulated to allay the fear of humankind relative to the soul. The great demand in the world today is for a sense of security, freedom, and liberty. True freedom, true liberty, has something cosmic behind it. End of quote. I believe that we all will agree that this is as true today as it was in 1937. I believe all people have an innate desire to be free, and in truth, we are born free. If we believe what Dr. Holmes says in the quotation which I just read, man in his desire to be free has created human systems which, if we can, are not careful, can in turn hold us in bondage in much the same way as those bonds from which we are trying to break loose. If we look at the definition of freedom, also from Dr. Holmes, it's found in the Science of Mind textbooks, we get a clue as to why this happens. Dr. Holmes says, the understanding of truth, infinite principle, is the emancipator. We are bound by our very freedom. Our free will binds us. Quoting from the master Jesus, he says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Dr. Holmes continues, the very force that makes us sick can heal us. As man realizes his oneness with creative mind, he is released from the bondage of false thinking. He sees to that freedom means liberty, but not license." End of quote. The key then is to come a realization is to come to a realization of our oneness with God and to understand what God is. In the Bible, we read that God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And in this teaching, we define God as spirit or the creative energy, which is the cause of all visible things. Love, wisdom, intelligence, power, substance, mind. The truth which is real, the principle which is dependable. Further, we teach that we are created by God, spirit in its image and likeness, and that we come from this one source, this one spirit which is eternal. You see, friends, having been created with free will, we are allowed to make choices. Some of these choices may be made consciously or unconsciously. However, whether conscious or unconscious, they are still choices. Therefore, depending on our choices, we can put ourselves in bondage to people, situations, and things. In many instances, we falsely believe that giving fierce, blind allegiance to persons, institutions, and the like can give us some form of freedom. But in truth, what have we done when we do this? We have made them false gods. We have given power to them, and we have become idolaters. We have used our free will to create a form of bondage for ourselves. What if these institutions, relationships, and things change? Then we are lost because we have become dependent on them. Many years ago, I remember Reverend Elmer telling us a story. 
And I can't remember the details of the story, but I remember her saying, friends, if you give your heart to somebody and that person go to the country for the weekend, what you do? <laughs> Dependency. Dependency. In another sense, when we constantly choose to bemoan the state of the economy, to bemoan the crime situation, we are using our energy to give power to these situations. We are putting our focus on those things and making them real in our experience. We are giving them power over our thoughts and feelings. We are making idols of them. In truth, we are indulging in a form of idolatry. Dr. Ernest Fox tells us, you cannot have a percentage of God. Either God is the only power or nothing at all. Therefore, when we give power to other things, we are using our free will to separate ourselves from the true power, the absolute power, God. Again, the same is true when we put our trust in material things. Material things come and material things go. They are form. No matter how good the form may appear to be, they change. They are impermanent. Jesus the Master, the way sure, reminded us of this when he told us, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Dr. Emmett Fox, in explaining the seventh commandment, which says, thou shalt not commit adultery, says that adultery was a common Hebrew synonym for idolatry. He explains that in the Old Testament, the two words are almost always interchangeable. Therefore, the worship of false gods was described as adultery. If we expand this thinking into current day situations, then when we look at persons, places, institutions, and situations for good, we have made them false gods and we are committing adultery, stroke, idolatry. For we have removed our allegiance from the omnipresent, omniscient power to the world of effect to receive our good. Friends, it is important to remember that outside forces cannot emancipate us. Outside forces cannot give us independence. Outside forces change. They are impermanent. They are shifting sand. They don't last. Only that which is permanent, that which is true, that which is real, can give us true emancipation and true independence. This is the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent one, ever available to all of us, the everlasting, eternal, immortal, infinite presence. This presence is ageless, deathless, infinite, free. When we put our faith and our trust in the spirit that is within, when we allow ourselves to be guided by that holy, pure spirit within, that is our true emancipation. Dr. Fox continues in his explanation of the seventh commandment. The fundamental idea behind this is to have one God. As you read through the Old Testament, you will find that the idea of the adulterous woman who is unfaithful to her husband constantly means the human soul that is turning away to some other God. 
quoting from Joel Goldsmith in the book, Practicing the Presence, never worship effect, never hate, fear or love an effect. To worship form is to indulge in idolatry. The very moment that any form becomes a necessity in our experience, we are placing our dependence, our happiness, and our joy in that, instead of in the infinite invisible, which is the cause of all form. Friends, I would encourage us to live in the moment. The past is the past. We cannot change the past. We can, however, change the effects of the past by changing the way we view the past. If we view the past with anger, hostility, fear, we attract most of these, those experiences to ourselves because we are using those emotions to feed our souls. And what is the soul? The soul is the creative medium of the universe. The Science of Mind textbook tells us that the soul, the creative medium of the, is, is the creative medium of spirit, the subjective side of life, the mirror of mind, for it reflects the forms of our thought that are given it. So when we give our thoughts, we have negative thoughts, and feed the soul negative thoughts, we create negative experiences. And Joel Goldsmith tells us, we use the human mind as an avenue of awareness, but we recognize the soul as the creative faculty. It stands to reason, therefore, that if we feed the soul thoughts of anger, hate, fear, and the like, this is what will be reflected to us. If, on the other hand, we feed it thoughts of love, compassion, peace, and abundance, these are the forms which will be reflected back to us. Friends, we cannot separate our spiritual life from our daily life. It is all one. We should not come here on a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, or whatever day, and learn truth principles, and then go to the office or wherever, and then act in a different way. This only causes confusion. It sends confusion to, in, to the individual soul, and our individual souls contribute to the soul of the nation. I believe that we should heed the words of St. Paul and be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I believe that by living in this manner, our lights will shine. Thus, we contribute to the transformation of the nation and by extension, the world. We have to listen to the promptings of our heart and heed the inner guidance. As I said, we should learn to live in the moment. The past is the past, and the way we live in the present helps to create the future. There has developed a tendency for many of us to lay blame for our current experiences as a country at the feet of slavery and colonization. Conversations on these topics are often fraught with anger and hostility. I would like to suggest that for our own benefit, for the benefit of our country, we eliminate the anger and hostility and instead try to identify some good, some benefits that came out of these experiences. You see, friends, when we focus on the negative aspects of these experiences with negative emotions, we are feeding the soul these negative experiences and emotions, 
and being the creative, impersonal medium that it is, the soul reproduces what it is fed. And what do we experience? More of the same. I suggest that if we truly love ourselves and our country, that we use our freedom of choice to identify and think about the good experiences. Let us each individually realign our soul with the eternal presence of love, joy, peace, and beauty. Focus on the good, the true, the beautiful. If each of us makes the effort to have thoughts of love, to speak with love, to act with love, then by so doing, we will be assisting in realignment of the soul of our country. And again, by extension, the soul of the world. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Many years ago, when I was just a child, we were having some celebrations for Emancipation Day. This was before we became an independent nation. And back then, the holiday was often referred to as 1st of August. I recall that there was a lot of merriment, and I guess quite a bit of spirits flowing. A lady who got a little high on the spirits shouted out, Christmas in the Miagos. <laughs> this past week, as I was thinking about my message for today, I recalled the incident. And I couldn't help thinking that she was indeed speaking truth, possibly without recognizing it. For in fact, what she was saying was that the celebration of the birth of the Christ Christmas, Christmas, was being experienced in her freedom, August, emancipation. She was in fact saying that she was experiencing the Christ spirit in her emancipation. And this is what true emancipation is all about. The freedom to be who we were created to be, sons and daughters of the living God, expressing the truth of our being. Interestingly, an affirmation from the reading for August 1, taken from Richard Living by Ernest Holmes and Charles Barker is, I am spirit releasing itself into form <coughs> under freedom. I am spirit releasing itself into form under freedom. Friends, let us use our freedom guided by divine wisdom. I would like to end with a quotation from the reading for August 7, also from Richard Living. The truth of my world is that it is heaven right here and right now. In this heaven of the presence of God, I do that which is pleasing to the Christ within me. I live with ease and I accomplish great things. The ever expanding activity of God frees me from the past, blesses me in the present, and makes great the future before me. Namaste.